Hi everyone, this is a video looking at reading paper one exam. I am recording this about half past three, um, the day before the exam. So this is going to be a very quick video looking at some um, quick tips, final tips for you to use in your exam. I will try to keep the video as short as possible, so I'm going to be very quick. So here's what your exam will look like tomorrow. There's five questions in the reading exam. You'll start by getting a little bit of an overview of what the story is about. Remember, you're getting a page and a half out of probably a 300 page book. So they'll give you a little introduction. For example, the story is told by Ruby Lennox, a young girl who runs a pet shop with her family. She has an older sister. Question one will always be the search and find question. So we're gonna, look, we're gonna go into detail on these, so I'll quickly go through them. So search and find is five marks. Then we've got an impression question for five marks how question two how questions for 10 and then the evaluation one at the end remember the impressions and the how questions can change so the impressions questions may be worth 10 marks tomorrow um, or it might be as it is here but just remember search and the evaluation they will stay the same but the impressions and how may move around a little bit so question one is finding information it's a very easy question it's, it's meant as an introduction to the exam first thing really clear is read lines one to seven that means just that so what i would do in the exam tomorrow is i would put a, read your exam paper and with a pen or a highlighter i would put a box around one's line to seven that means you know your answer must become within that little box it sounds like a really easy thing however in the mock we've done previously people were giving me stuff from lines eight or nine or even further than that down below which means you'll get no answers could be wrong so just make sure lines one to seven okay so really simple stuff like for example um, her family own a pet shop she's not allowed pets okay things like that okay really important it says that you do a sentence you don't have to do a big sentence but some kind of sentence this one's about ruby lennox so every single of one of the five bullet points start with either ruby or she so for example ruby gives her pets lots of attention she wants to run a pet shop she thinks it's her future she's not allowed so if it's about a girl or a woman put the name of the woman or she if it's about a boy say if the character was called tom lennox we'd put tom gives his pets lots of attention he starting with that will make it really clear for example if you just put if you just put for example parrot you're not going to get the mark so just do a little sentence to make sure you get the mark question two in this case is an impressions question so what impression does the writer create of the lennox family in these lines it's worth five marks really really important Remember this, five mark equals five minutes. So if it's a five mark question, five minutes, you've got to move on. The, the main way people do not do well in the exam is they don't finish it. So remember to yourself, five minutes is five marks. If it's a 10 mark question, you're looking to 13, 15 minutes. You've got to be strict for yourself tomorrow. If you've not done, an, um, if you don't finish the answer after five minutes, you move on. In a five mark question like this, we're looking at two PEs. In a 10 mark question, we're looking for four or five or six. So, impressions basically means a kind of view you might have of a replace or person. So, in this question, we're looking at what you think from reading these lines and just these lines you think of the Lennox family. It might be tomorrow, it might be about just one of the uh, one person, or it might be about a place. So, it might be read this and tell me what impressions you get of Paris, for example. So, it means a kind of view you have. So, um, I talked about my students yesterday about uh, the, the person Stephen Bear who's on things like X on the Beach. What impressions you got? And you were saying things like stupid, arrogant, things like that. Try to keep your impressions simple. So, for example, I think the family are happy, brave, scared, competitive, negative, selfish. It's focused on your response to the text. So you can say anything you want about the family as long as you back it up with a quote. So in the test, in the exam, questions two, three, and four, we're looking at terminology. What does terminology mean? It means these things here. You can talk about all of this in your exam. However, I would be looking at just the red. If you don't know at this stage, the day before the exam, what a simile is, what a metaphor is, forget about it. If you can revise it tonight, great. If not, just concentrate on the red things and say why they've been used by the writer. So for example, every noise put him on edge. Maybe my impression I get there is the character is worried, but he pressed on, or it means he's determined because he's carried on doing what he was doing. So this is a five mark question. What I've done is I've picked out three random quotes from the text and then we're just going to talk about what impression we get. So, but we're going to use this structure. So the structure we're going to use is one impression I get of the family is, for example, they're not happy, then the quote, 
then this verb adjective shows the reader. So I just let's look at one for example. Mum took a double dose of sleeping pills and chopped into oblivion. So what does that say about the mum? Well, I would say it says she doesn't really want to spend time with her family. That's the impression. Okay, with the quote, okay, you can pick two parts of the quote. We could say the, the double dose of sleeping pills. So she's not just taking sleeping pills, she's taking a double dose. The adjective double here tells us she's really, really trying to get away from the family. She's almost taking a, an extra um, part of her medi med medicine to make sure she's not around. And dropped into oblivion. So the noun there is like she doesn't just want to drop into a sleep. Oblivion makes it sound like she wants to be completely unaware and completely unconscious. Okay, again, the one below, I was playing Scrabble with myself. What impression do we get of the girl? Well, she's playing a game she normally plays with a few people on her own. She's talking to her teddy, so probably we think she's getting lonely. But how are we going to put that into a PE? So basically the PE will be the impression we get, the quote, and then explain it. So for example, one impression I get is they don't spend a lot of time together. The repetition of the family doing different things as usual suggests this is a common thing for them. Another impression I get is the mother seems unhappy. The adjective double dose, double, suggests she's given herself an extra pill to make sure she doesn't have to spend any time with them. And the noun oblivion makes the reader feel she wants to be completely unconscious. The other impression I get of one of the main characters is she's lonely, with the, she's playing Scrabble on her own and talking to her teddy. The fact she plays a game meant for two heightens her loneliness, while personifying her teddy makes the reader feel sympathy for Ruby. Okay, you're going to get two how questions in the exam. Note here, it says underneath the question, you must refer to the language used in the text to support your answer using relevant subject terminology. Terminology is this stuff here. So again, top four are the main ones, but it says you need to use it. However, if we're doing, because this is a 10 mark question, 13 to 15 minutes, if we're doing five PEEs, you don't have to use terminology all the time, maybe just twice or three times. Two or three of your PEEs, you need to do it. This question is, how does the writer show the fire spreading becoming more serious? Remember, it's just in these lines. You'll get two kinds of these questions, and they'll be pretty similar. So we'll just go through the one. So you maybe you're using this terminology. You're going to zoom in on keywords. Okay. So I again, here's some quotes. Here's the extract that you're going to look at. Okay. And you're going to use this PE. So the writer shows the fire spreading with the quote. Use the quote. Then say this adjective statistic work suggests what? So why is it being used by the reader? So let's look, at, so that's the thing. Try to pick out a few quotes if you want to pause the video. If not, we'll go through some. Okay, so the right, so the question is basically, how does the writer make the fire seem serious and how it's getting worse? So I could say straight away, the verb snoring is used to show the mother is in a deep sleep and not be able to react to the growing fire. Okay, um, the writer uses sensory language sizzle to put the reader directly into the story. The so the writer says the energetic flame. The adjective energetic suggests the flame is vigorous and full of life. The writer says there's no stopping the flame and it greedily gobbled everything in its path. The adverb greedily tells the reader the fire has a strong desire to devour everything. And the verb gobbled makes it seem like the fire is eating the house in huge chunks. That's why we're looking at key words. So if it was said the verb et, um, et, we're not too sure, but gobbled, if you think to yourself, if you're having a bag of Haribo, if you gobble the Haribo, it means you have everything, don't you? And that's what we're talking about with the fire. The writer uses dialogue, ruby, ruby, to show the humans are now aware of the fire, and the repeated explanation suggests they know they're in a perilous situation. Question five is the last one. Basically, you'll get a question where it says, something about a character, so P P Patricia becomes a hero, or Obed, we feel sorry for him, how far do you agree? Okay, it says read line 50 to the end, however, if you read the question, it says you need to write about how the, the character Patricia is presented here and in the passage as a whole. So that means you need to talk about the whole extract when you're talking about this character. Okay, It'll, the, this question will always be in the last one in the exam. Always agree with a statement. In this question, it says, do you agree she's a hero? You're always going to agree whatever they say in the question. The good news is if you've used the question earlier um, about questions two, three, or four about this character, as long as it relates, you can ex use exactly the same PE in this question. Okay, really important. We're talking about subject terminology. Okay, this stuff. In question two, we have to use it. In question three, we have to use it. In question four, we have to use it. However, in question five, it doesn't say we have to use it. So in this question, that means we don't have to use it. However, be flexible. Tomorrow, it might say it. So if it says subject terminology, you need to use it. If not, you don't need to use it. 
Teacher tip, rephrase the question. It says here, how far do you agree she's a real heroine? Rephrase the question and say, do you think she's a hero? Yes, but what words or phrases tell us we're meant to know she's a hero? How do you get top marks? Remember, you're talking about the whole extract, so you could talk about how the character has changed. We're not one dimensional, so if you comment that maybe at the start she seems quiet and at the end she seems really heroic, that's going to impress the examiner. Okay, so remember that this is the question. I picked out two random quotes. One of them, it's all right, the fire brigade will be here soon. She says that, and then it says, Patricia swings herself off the windowsill and onto the drain pipe. Here's the structure you should use. I agree that Patricia is a hero when it says, give a quote, and then say, this suggests. So pause the video, maybe pick out one of the quotes and think to yourself, why does that make her a hero? Look at my examples. We see she's a hero when it says, it's all right, the fire brigade will be here soon. This suggests she's looking after people and trying to make them feel better. Well, next one, she almost seems like she's a superhero when she swings off the windowsill. The verb swings makes her seem acrobatic, amazing. I know I've used the word freight, the verb there, the, ver the word verb there to describe it. I don't have to do that because I'm confident I'm using it. Okay. Another point is with the subject terminology, if you're confident with simile, metaphor, verb, verb, um, adjective, whatever, that's great. Use it. If you're not confident, don't use it too much. It's better to not use it than to get it wrong. So instead of just saying the verb swings, you could just say the word swings. So remember, key things from this video are if it's a five mark question, five minutes. If it's a 10 mark question, 13 to 15 minutes. If it's a five mark question, you're looking for two PEs. If it's a 10 mark question, you're looking for five or six PEs with many quotes as you can. Time managing is a major part of this exam, so make sure you do it.